Hello everyone. Uh, so today we're going to be learning about one of the most fundamental concepts of organic chemistry and of chemistry in general, which is um, acids and bases. So there are two types of acids and bases that you need to be aware of, two, two different definitions, which is the Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases and then the Lewis acid and base. So first let's tackle the Bronsted-Lowry acid and base. So that's the one that you should be familiar, familiar with from uh, your general chemistry classes. So how we define a Bronsted-Lowry acid and base is, first of all, a Bronsted-Lowry acid is defined as a proton donor, okay, a proton donor. A uh, proton is also synonymous with the H plus ion because that is what we're donating, a hydrogen ion. So a proton donor, that is a Bronsted-Lowry acid, all right? And then a Bronsted-Lowry base is pretty much the exact opposite it is a proton acceptor, all right? So it accepts the proton. So it is a proton or H plus acceptor. So, so, th so again, um, we're essentially just talking about the, trans uh, the transfer of an H plus ion from one molecule to another molecule. And that is essentially what an acid, that is essentially how we describe an acid and base through the Bronsted-Lowry definition. So let's look at an example. So let's say we have HCl or hydrochloric acid reacting with water and that gives us H3O plus or a hydronium ion plus a Cl minus, a chloride anion. All right, so let's track what's happening here. So first thing that you should notice is that there is a transfer of um, this hydrogen ion from the HCl onto the water, and that's what makes H3O+. So this chlorine no longer has that hydrogen. And because of that, since so the, the HCl is where the hydrogen is being donated from, so therefore that by our Bronsted-Lowry definition is our acid, right? So that is our Bronsted-Lowry acid. And in that same definition, since water is the one that is accepting our proton, our H plus ion, it is our base, okay? And then uh, another thing, more terminology that we also need to be aware of is that on the right side of our uh, formula here, we also have what is called our conjugate acid and our conjugate base. So how we determine those is our conjugate acid is basically, again, um, what our base becomes, right? So, but once our base um, receives the hydrogen or accepts the H plus or proton, it becomes the conjugate acid. And the same thing is with the base, uh, same thing with the acid. So once the acid donates its hydrogen or donates its proton, it becomes the conjugate base. Okay, so that is the that is using the definition of the Bronsted-Lowry acid and base. So um, let's compare that to the definition using Lewis acids acids and base. All right. So with a Lewis acid, a Lewis acid is described as an electron. So an electron pair acceptor. Okay. So an electron pair acceptor. So instead of defining it as a proton donor, we define it as accepting an electron pair. And we will be looking at examples of how we can uh, see that. Uh, whereas a base, in a, as a Lewis base, is defined as an electron pair donor. So electron pair donor. So if you notice, um, the words donor and acceptor have been swapped between uh, Bronsted, Lowry, and Lewis acid and base definitions. However, uh, what we're donating and what we are accepting is uh, very different. Okay, so keep track of that because these definitions are extremely important. So Bronsted, Lowry, acid, and base uh, is something that you might have learned already before in general chemistry, 
but a Lewis acid and base is the main focus of organic chemistry. Okay, so a lot, uh, organic chemistry focuses mainly on the definition of Lewis acids and bases. Another thing that you should also be aware of is a Lewis acid is also called an electrophile. Okay, an electrophile is also a Lewis acid. So Lewis acid is also an electrophile, therefore a Lewis base is also a nucleophile. Okay, so a Lewis base is also a nucleophile. So let's expand on these definitions. So let's let's talk about why we define them as this. So um, a Lewis acid is defined as an electron pair acceptor. So what is happening? So it accepts an electron pair. Electrophile means electron loving. So it likes electrons. So it wants to take in electron pairs. Whereas a nucleophile is something that donates electrons. So let's look at that definition in this same example. Okay. So let's look at that. So let's say we have, again, we look at um, the HCl, a hydrogen that is bonded to a chlorine, correct? That's HCl. And we are bonding that to a water, correct? So it's an oxygen that has two hydrogens. That is our water. Um, if we were to take this <clears throat> molecule, what is essentially happening is that um, this water, this oxygen of this water is actually using its electrons right here, using its electron pair to bond to this hydrogen here. And then as it's bonding to this hydrogen, this hydrogen breaks off from this chlorine and the bond between the hydrogen and chlorine returns the electrons to this chlorine. And that is how we end up with um, this hydronium ion. So this hydronium ion comes about because this oxygen bonds to this third hydrogen And we also end up with this chloride anion. So a chlorine that normally would have had just three lone pairs now gets a fourth lone pair from um, that bond that broke between the hydrogen and the chlorine. Okay, so what you must so what you should notice is that this right here, what we described as an acid in our Bronsted Lowry definition is still an acid in our Lewis acid definition. All right, and this is still our base in our, in our um, Lewis, ac uh, Lewis acids and base definition. Okay, so that's something that you should notice. So what is what an acid is still remains the same regardless of whether it's defined through the Bronsted-Lowry acid definition or the Lewis acid base definition. And so, um, but it's just we look at it differently, right? So the other thing that you should notice is that this right here is also our electrophile. And our electrophile is electron loving, so it gains electrons, right? So another thing that you should understand about these arrows is that uh, the direction that the arrow points is where the electrons are going towards, all right? So that wh where it points from is the source of the electrons, where it points to is where the electrons end up. All right. So if you notice, with our chlorine, um, or our, <clears throat> our our HCl right here, the arrows are being pointed to the hydrogen and to the chlorine. So that is our electrophile, because that is where the arrows are pointing to. That means that that's where the electrons are going towards, and it's electron loving, so it's taking in those electrons. Whereas our Lewis base, that's where the electrons are originating from, which is our Lewis base, and that therefore that is our nucleophile. So a nucleophile is where electron pairs originate from. 
Okay, so we will go into more detail about a nucleophile versus an electrophile later, but that is just a general definition of a Bronsted-Lowry acid and base versus a Lewis acid and base and how you would distinguish between them, okay? So whereas in a Bronsted-Lowry acid and base, you would just directly look at, um, you would just directly look at, oh, we have a hydrogen here that was originally with bonded to chlorine, but now it's been being donated to this water to give us our hydronium. So therefore, th that would be our acid because it's our proton donor. Therefore, the other molecule would be our proton acceptor, so therefore our base. But with a Lewis acid and base definition, we're just looking at it through a different definition, right? Which is uh, through the electron. So with the acid being the electron pair acceptor with and where the base is the electron pair donor. And so again, the electron pair donor is where the arrow originates and the electron pair acceptor is where the um, arrow ends up being pointing to. Again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and put them down in the comments. Again, I'm just starting this channel. So if there are other topics that you want me to cover, uh, go ahead and um, link them down below in the comments. And um, I would really like it if you enjoyed this video to um, uh, to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. I will, uh, on, on my next video, I will be talking about uh, the difference between nucleophile and electrophile. And then uh, moving on forwards, I will be talking about more complex topics uh, associated with organic chemistry. Uh, thank you for listening.